Hey guys, Lancer here. Hope everyone's doing well. Thanks for joining me. We'll look into some more Innistrad spoil uh, Midnight Hunt spoilers. Now I'm going to split this up from my daily markets update, mainly because I think it's just easier to get the title in, and it just makes it easier to cover exactly what happens as the days go by. So let's get right to it. So we got another spoiled card, Falcon Wrath Pit Fighter. So this is pretty cool, 1 mana 2-1. It feels similar to the other one that has the discard madness effect, where if you discard a card and it's a vampire or something, you can play it as you discard it, um, which is cool. So this one, I think, is one, black, uh, one colorless, one red. Discard a card, sacrifice a vampire. Draw two cards, activate only if an opponent lost life this turn. Feels actually really good. It does feel really good because... Any card that you're going to be sacrificing as a vampire could be a token. And when you discard a card, you normally get no value for it. But for two mana, to sacrifice a token and discard a card and then draw two cards is really good. Now, the only thing is, activate only if an opponent has lost life this turn. This could make you a target and commander. This could be pretty good if you have a way to ping uh, each turn whenever you need to. Um... It's tough, but it does help Madness decks quite a bit as well, because it does give you an option to discard a Madness card. I, all in all, I think it's actually a really good card. We'll have to see what comes out of it, but for one red mana, 2-1 in red, pretty damn good. Kessig Naturalist from Innistrad. Why am I even saying from Innistrad? Uh, Midnight Hunt, so we have a 1 red, 1 green, extremely pushed, 2-2 two -two werewolf. That says, whenever he attacks, add red or green. Until the end of turn, you do not lose this mana as steps and phases end. end. And he's obviously got Daybound. And whenever he has, whenever he flips, other wolves and werewolves you control get plus one, plus one. And whenever he attacks, he still continues to add red or green. Feels pretty good to me overall. I think one of the most important things to remember with these kinds of cards is that they're always going to have some place in certain... Um, kind of theme decks. I don't know if you're going to see him in standard or anything like that, but he's obviously really good if you're playing a Werewolf Commander deck. Graveyard Trespasser, a black werewolf. Two colorless, one black for a 3-3. Three, three. Werewolf with Ward. Discard a card if you want to Ward. Um, I forgot exactly. I think Ward is pay an extra two mana to target this creature. I think whenever Graveyard Trespass enters the battlefield or attacks, exile to one target creature from Graveyard. If a creature card was exiled this way, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. This triggers the opponents lose a life because it doesn't say the opponents have to be damaged this turn. It says opponents have to lose the life. So this is actually really good as long as the early plays allow for a creature card to get put into the graveyard, I guess. If that's the case, they might be a bit tough to trigger them instantly. Uh, the other side has got um, oh, gross. It's eating, uh, I guess, I guess he's trying really hard not to eat people, so he's going into the graveyards to, I guess, uh. um, whenever a graveyard glutton enters the battlefield or attacks, exile for two target creature cards from the graveyard. For each, cre for each creature card, exile this way, each opponent loses one life, and you gain one life. Eh, I mean, both sides do the same thing. Both sides trigger the life loss, which means that you could use this as an initial... Uh, you're going to run out of creatures super fast. That's the only thing. You're going to run out of creatures super fast with this card. Uh, because in standard, there's only so many creatures. In commander, you have four people. So there might be more options for creatures to get eaten that way. And you can trigger your life loss cards, but it's still a weird one. Ghoulish pros processions from... Um, Ah, oh, keep saying from uh, black enchantment uncommon one colorless one black for a whenever one or more non-token creature dies create a two two black zombie creature token with decay. This ability triggers only once each turn. Uh, only once each turn. But for two black uh, two mana, really good early start of in a in a zombie deck. It's actually really really good. Yeah, I don't say anything wrong with it. It's actually a great uh, board wipe uh, board wipe recovery as well. Then you got Gisa, Glorious Reser Re Resurrector. Um, she looks really happy and obviously crazy, uh, as always. Where's her brother? Two colorless, two black for a legendary human wizard. If an ex if a creature an opponent controls would die, exile instead. Not bad for a... F uh, not, not bad. In the beginning of the upkeep, put all creature cards exiled with Gisa, Glorious Resurrector, onto the battlefield under your control. They gain Decayed. 
pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. So you exile their creatures. So if they're playing a graveyard deck, then they're not going to be happy about that. Okay, but it's it's from the graveyard goes uh, from the battlefield goes into the graveyard, not just from anywhere goes into the graveyard. But then they come back with her, and then when they attack. They instantly get uh, they get sacrificed at the end of combat, but it's still really good, really really good. I love this decayed ability because it makes the tokens, which means at the end of combat, why not just sacrifice the token for some other ability? Yeah, well, let's get right into the rest of the spoilers that are not uh, that are still English. So we got pithing needles. So I know that pithing needles has been on our list for going up, and that is very disturbing. Uh, what's going on here? But what it looks like is the prices might be coming down quite sharply from then on. You got Curse of Silence. I think we might have covered this. Seize the Storm. We covered that one. Graveyard Trespasser. Vampire Solicite. Socialite. Sorry. Solicite. <laughs> I can imagine a vampire doing that. One black, one red for a 2-2. Two, two. Menace. Vampire Noble. When Vampire Socialite enters the battlefield if an opponent lost life this turn put a plus one plus encounter on each other vampire you control pretty good as long as an opponent lose lost life this turn each other vampire you control enter the battlefield with an additional plus one plus encounters on it pretty good it it helps the things that are already on the battlefield and it helps all the things that are going to enter the battlefield as long as you can fulfill the requirements of a, a opponent losing a life this turn so just find a way to consistently get some damage going on there. The Celestius, uh, three colors for a legendary artifact. If it's neither day or night, it becomes day as the Celestius enters the battlefield. Cool. Tap to add one mana of any color. Pay three, tap, it is night. If it's night, it becomes day, otherwise it becomes night. Activate only as a sorcery. Okay, sure. Whenever day becomes night or night becomes day, you gain one life, you may draw a card if you do discard a card. Not bad. Not bad. Um, is this good in werewolf decks or is this good in decks that are not werewolf decks? This feels like it's good in commander decks that are not werewolf decks. While it is good that you can control day and night cycles, other people can control it as well. And you mostly want at three mana, you kind of just want to spend three mana and draw a card and discard a card. But then again, maybe that's just a waste as well. Arcane Infusion, one blue, one red for an instant. Look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal an instant or sorcery card from among them. Put it onto your hand. Put the rest at the bottom of your library in a random order. Not bad. Flashback, three colorless, one blue, one red. Hmm. Interesting. Lunar Frenzy, from uh, pay X and one red. Instant, target creature you control gets plus X plus zero and gains first strike and trample until end of turn. Great party trick. That is going to piss a lot of people off. Devoted Graph Keeper. Oh, is this a werewolf? I didn't realize. Uh, one blue, one white for a 2-1. When it enters the battlefield, mill two cards. Whenever you cast a spell from your graveyard, tap creature you do not control. Disturb. One colorless, one white, one blue. You may cast this card from your graveyard transformed for its disturbed disturbed cast. Okay, it's a spirit. Uh, departed Soul Keeper can, only, uh, can block only creatures with flying. A Departed Soul Keeper would be put into the graveyard from anywhere, exiled instead. Huh. Okay, interesting. I don't know if it's that good or not. Gavin, Gavany Dawn Guard, one colorless, two white for a 3-3 three, three human soldier with ward one. If, it, if it's neither day or, nor night, it becomes day as Ga Gavany Dawn Guard enters the battlefield. Whenever day becomes night or night becomes day, oh god, that's so hard to keep track of. Look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card with mana value three or less from one of them. Put them into your hand. Put the rest of the bottom of your library in any order. That's really good. Blade Stitch Scab, one blue, one black for a 2-3 zombie soldier. Other zombies get plus one, plus zero. That's okay. Dissipate. Okay, so that's just a kind of spell. Looks like that's fine. Uh, a zombie that I have not opened up. 
You got Hobbling Zombie, two colorless, one black for a 2 2 death type zombie. Really good. When it dies, and uh, create a 2 2 black zombie creature with decayed token with decayed. Perfect. Not open up that one. You got Clear Shot, two colors, one green for an instant target creature you control gets plus one plus one until end of turn. It deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. Perfect. Nice. Simple. I like it. Got all of the other usual cards. Let's have a look at the ones we missed. Pantry Zombie. Okay. Really? Okay. Sure. I don't know what he's eating from the pantry that looks like it's luminescent, but it's a one blue for a 1-3 defender. Tap 3, untap creatures control. Look at the top card of your library you may put into the graveyard. Not bad. I guess it depends on what you're doing with it, but yeah, it's not bad. Siege Zombie. One colorless, one black for a 2-2 two, two zombie. Tap three, untap creatures control. Each opponent loses one life. Now that might actually have some value in it. We'll have to see. And that is it for the spoilers. I think I covered uh, the other ones in day one video. Like I said, I'm splitting up the videos from my update. The update is going to come straight after this one. Thanks again and have a good one. See you guys.